spirit, and it's good to see their smiling faces. I mean, are there smiles on there or not? Oh yeah, they're there. That's good. That's good. Did you enjoy the Fourth of July yesterday? Yes. See enough fireworks for another year? It was sure fun. To, uh, you know, every year it seems like there's a I'm enjoying the Fourth of July more here in Iowa than I did in North Dakota. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's green space or if it's the fireworks that you get to see here that we just didn't get to see much in North Dakota. Always a fire danger. Some sort of thing is always dry. But uh, good to have you here today. Just want you to know that uh, we appreciate those who have uh, served in the military, who uh, have protected our country or gave themselves to serve our country over some point in time in your life and who can continue to do that today. We are grateful for them. And there's a few of you here, Daisy. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's Jim. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, oh. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Uh, Bob. And Bob. Oh, man. <laughs> the army will take anybody. To <laughs> it's kind of like you don't know if you feel safe or not. <laughs> I bet he's playing the piano and that targets you yeah, in the service. So I, I'm, I shouldn't say that. Bob, thank you so much for your service. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know that the ladies are going to resume their Hebrew study this Tuesday at 9.30, and I thought, well, if the ladies are going to resume it, so <coughs> shall the men. Because if the women are coming, maybe the husbands would like to come with the women, and we'll, the guys will meet in the fellowship hall at 9.30, and so uh, just want you to know it's both men and women uh, this Tuesday to kind of take care of two more sessions that are left in the book of Hebrews. So uh, keep that in mind. You're invited to come to that. Doesn't matter if you're a member or not of Harbor of Joy. You are welcome to come. Her request today, just to add one, Mary and Kyle, just to pray for her back. She's been going through a lot of pain in her back, and I thought it'd be Jeff that would be giving a lot of pain, but uh, there's other kinds of pain, isn't there? Um, but we just hope that the Lord will just touch your body, and give you some relief. Uh, it's, it's not any fun to have. A lot of pain going on in your in your life. Also, remember um, cancer treatment at Roger. That's um, Terry um, Dirks. Dirks' dad down in Texas. Walt Meyer is is uh, back, but he's at home dealing with some health issues. That Adela, who is still getting some treatment for her dizziness in Rochester, and doing that in the middle of this month. And then also our sympathies go out to Peg Pebble and Jim for the loss of Peg's brother-in-law this past week. And uh, that's not a, there's a lot, of, a lot of burdens kind of that are listed in the bulletin. There's probably others that are not spoken here today as well. But God knows where you're at and what you're dealing with in your life as well. We're thankful that we can come together and worship the Lord together and uh, meet together. You know, this is, not everybody can do this in America, but uh, I'm glad that we were able to do it by uh, doing it here today. We uh, are thankful for those of you that are staying at home, you know where you need to be today, and uh, our hearts go out to you and our thoughts and our prayers, and uh, just that the Lord would use this morning in your heart and your life some way that would build you up and encourage you in the faith. That's, uh, just think that's all the announcements that I do have, and uh, I am just going to say, let us stand as we sing the song, Flawless, that uh, the band is going to play.
first Sunday in July, which means it's communion Sunday. Uh, those of you that are here, you don't have to worry about it. We've got everything we we'll ever need. Those of you that are watching us, listening to us on your devices, uh, somewhere along the way, you might want to get yourself what you need for taking communion when the time comes when we do. Just to give you a little heads up with that. But I do have a brief order of confession and forgiveness here this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take some time in just doing some self-examination, personal confession, Whatever the Holy Spirit brings to your heart and your mind this morning, you can either ask Him to forgive you or you can praise His name for the things He brings and reveals to you today. Let's take some time.
seat. Uh, we'll have a food stall on the right. It's kind of an offering time, but we don't pass any plates. We want to give us really between you and the Lord, and there's a plate in the back. The plate when you come in, if you'd like to put something in there, that's entirely between you and the Lord and doing that. So uh, we're going to just pretend that there's plates being passed. We'll listen to the uh, flute. So, kind of, if my people. Stand as we hear God's word this morning it comes to us from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Heavenly Father, I need you right now to preach your word this morning, as all of us need you to hear it, and to uh, 
hear what you want us to hear, that we may plant it and put it in our hearts, take it with us, to live it out in each and every day that you give to us. So thank you for the privilege that we have to be together and to hear your word together this morning. If it's here in person or if it's through a listening device or a video, it matters not. Your word will go forth. It will not return void. That's your promise. Those are your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, when you think about rest, you think about going on vacation, right? No, I don't think so. You go on vacation and you get back and guess what? You're more tired than when you left. <laughs> so that's not the kind of rest that Jesus is talking about here. But at the beginning it says, at that time Jesus said, you know, at that time, it means we have to look ahead of what he says here. And uh, it's very similar to what we find in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 22, when Jesus sends out the 72. Here in Matthew, Matthew just says that he sent out the 12. And so we we uh, we look at that all the all the disciples that Jesus is teaching and uh, ministering to the seventy two as well as the twelve they're all together at uh, the time that this is spoken and it's really one where Jesus is talking about some judgment on some cities prior to what I read here today he talks about Chorazin Bethsaida those are Jewish cities. Not too far from Capernaum, which is also the place where Jesus' headquarters was, along the Sea of Galilee. They talked about along the Mediterranean coast, there was Tyre and Sidon, Gentile cities. And what Jesus says is that if the miracles, if the things that the people heard and would have seen in these cities, if they, they, if they would have repented, there would have been more hope even for Sodom. Sodom would not have been judged if they would have seen the same kinds of miracles that were done in these towns, in these cities. And he goes on, and he, in our text it says that Jesus is the one who gives a revelation and seeing our need, the need to hear what Jesus is saying, especially when Jesus says, come unto me. All of us receive invitations in the mail. You probably got some here last month for graduations, or maybe you're still getting some. You get some for weddings, and you get some for birthdays, and sometimes for retirement parties. You know, we get all kinds of invitations, and but there's none like the invitation that Jesus is giving to us here. Come on to me. Who's he talking to? He's talking to all. All who are weary and burdened. Come on to me. Do you have any burdens with you here today? Are you tired out? Are you weary? I don't like listening to the news anymore. I'm weary of it. It's fast. <laughs> I think I have to listen to it. I'm weary of the, of the coronavirus. Hearing that every day and different things that you hear about it. It's all over the place. But there's a physical rest that Jesus, uh, I mean, that we could be looking at. There's a physical rest, but Jesus is looking at a spiritual rest. There's a big difference. A physical rest, sometimes you go like, I can't wait till I'm retired, or semi-retired, or just plain tired. It can be one of those things for you here today. Wore out. But when it comes to the spiritual rest, as Jesus was referring to here, it has to do with bringing rest to your soul. There's no better kind of rest than to your soul. It's deeper than a physical rest. 
physical death. In Isaiah 57, verse 21, I think I had this plane over my mind when I was watering the, the plants around the church this past week. It says, There is no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Well, it takes a long time to water everything around here. So I love it. No, I just thought there's no mosquitoes or gnats. But we also find in Isaiah 57, verse 20, the, the, the verse right ahead of this one, it says, like the wicked, they're like the tossing of the sea, which cannot rest. You know, you can be here today and in your own life you go like, man, that sounds like me. I'm just being tossed here and tossed there and, and uh, I, I just don't have this peace and this rest that Jesus is talking about here. And yet his invitation is for every one of us. Come on to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's a promise. But we need to come. Just like receiving invitations in the mail for different things, if it's graduations, weddings, or birthdays, or retirement parties, you know, they're asking you to come. Sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't, but you would send a little something acknowledging what was going on in their lives. Can't be there, but at least let them know you got their invitation, you did respond to it. Have you responded to this invitation by Jesus Christ in your life? It's very simple. Come on to me. We all get weary. We all have burdens. So why not come? Why not go to Jesus? Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, you know what a yoke is? You well, know, a yoke is kind of you put around the neck of a, of a Clydesdale or a Pergeron, or it can be an oxen. <coughs> you put it around them, it's a collar, and uh, or it can be a, a, a wooden a wooden yoke that you tie two animals together and they pull whatever they're supposed to be pulling. And here, uh, when you think of a yoke, it, goes like, it sounds pretty uncomfortable. It sounds like something I really don't want to put on me. But the yoke that Jesus is talking about here is, is once you receive his rest, you'll also take his yoke. Because says that he is gentle and humble in heart. You see, the people that were wanting the Jews to obey God and to follow God were like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and the religious leaders. They would always tell the people they weren't doing enough. They needed to do more. They needed to follow Moses more uh, and better than what they're doing. And they just kept heaping on more and more on them where they just said, we can't carry this. It was too big of a yoke. And so Jesus, he says, that's why he says, I am gentle and humble. Come. And if you take my yoke, it is Jesus who is going to be in the yoke with you. He'll pull the load. Pull it all by himself. We're just along for the ride. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to think of the worst thing you'd ever want to do. What's you know the worst job you could ever do or have? I want you to think of that a little bit. The worst job. Plug toilet. <laughs> Anybody think of that one? That could be a bad one. Think the worst job you can think of. Now think of this that you go like, 
you heard that you've got to go, we'll just say, unplug the toilet. And you're going like, oh, no. You've got to be kidding me. And so you go and go like, well, I suppose I better start with a plunger. You have to find a plunger. And you find a plunger, and when you get to where the toilet is, you find that it is workable. Somebody else got there before you did and took care of it. Now how do you feel? Who did this? Who got there before me? And you say, like, thank you so much for doing it. And Jesus did the worst thing for us because we couldn't do it as we went to the cross. Suffered on the cross and died for us. That we may be forgiven and have eternal life. The worst job there was go to the cross. And he did it for you and for me. <clears throat> that we may be saved from our sins. We may be flawless because of the cross. So I ask you again here this morning are you weary and burdened? Weary. In the sense, spiritually, are you weary? I just don't know if I'm going to heaven or not. I just don't know if, if I'm right with God. I do a lot of good things. I've done a lot of good things in my life. But I just don't really have that assurance that if I die today, I'm going to heaven. I think I would. I hope I would. But I don't want you to be thinking you would or hope so. I want you to know so. By trusting in Jesus and what He's done for you, He's done it all. Ask yourself Have I responded to the invitation given by Jesus here? Come on to me. Have you responded to it? Come on to me. I need you. I need Him. For He is the only one that can give me the rest that He talks about. And why is the yoke easy and, a, and the burden light? It's because Jesus is doing all the pulling. He's doing all the pulling. For each of us. So uh, don't get in his way. Let him do it. Let him do it. You just go along with him. Because he'll provide all that you and I need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that all that you do is so simple. Sometimes we say it's easier said than done. And we may be here this morning saying, Lord, I hear the pastor preaching, but I just have a hard time with it. I still think I got to do something along the way here. But if we have to do something, then it's not grace anymore. It's works. My own works. And we know that it is by grace, through faith, that we've been saved. Not by works. We trust in what Jesus Christ said he has done, which he has done and accomplished for us. He is the one that brings us the rest for our souls. He's the one that brings us a peace that passes all understanding. He gives us the authority to go, to minister to other people. Lord, we're not to worry about what we say to those around us or what they want to hear, but you called us to give to those what they need to hear. We need Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And if they need help in understanding that, may we be patient. And may, we, may you help us, Lord, to explain it in a way that the light goes on 
the bells ring. When that happens, Lord, we know that you have revealed it to them through us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. So if there be someone here today who needs to hear these words to come unto me, to me is Jesus Christ, may he or she just simply come by faith and say in your heart that I need Jesus Christ as my Savior and I will follow him as he gives me strength and as he shows me the way each and every day. We pray in his name. Let us stand as we say the Apostles' Creed together before we come to the table. Apostle Creed reminds us of a lot of different things, but basically what Christianity is all about. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Before we take communion, I'm just going to, just in case there's someone here who doesn't know how we do this, or how we're going to do it. Uh, this is how we're going to do it. Once I give the words of institution, uh, someone, or you will know, <laughs> if you can come forward, you can. Uh, no one's going to touch anything here other than you, whatever you take. You take the wafer, you take cup of wine or grape juice here and you put it in the basket and you drink of it and you can be seated. If you want to go up and spend some time at the altar, you sure are welcome to do that. So uh, we'll just kind of take our, our time and want God to do the work that he says he would like to do in our hearts and our lives this morning. The church is just where you come and you sit and listen. It's where God really wants to speak to you, where he changes you that you're different when you leave. Because he's here. He's the living God. So if you're confused, that's okay. But it sounds like I am, too. But if you just raise your hand, someone will tell you what to do. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you.
Here is some good news. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now given you his holy body and blood, through which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you in true faith and to everlasting life. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, followed by the benediction. Bravo. Lead you out and dismiss you with a song. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Who wrote God Loves You? Anyone? Moses! <laughs> Very Berlin. From what country was he from? He's an immigrant. Russia.